So there are quite a few tables in the paper, and one of the ones that is really interesting is uh, figure seven. Could you um, talk to us about what the particular table is trying to demonstrate and the difference between overall survival and the PFS gain? So table seven can potentially be confusing. Um, it is worth highlighting what exactly it's trying to show, which is it's trying to show um, how accurate the surrogate endpoint of PFS is in relation to overall um, survival. And so the reason that they're that we use PFS and the reason that we accept it is we accept it as a surrogate endpoint for regulatory purposes because it is a shorter term, therefore less expensive endpoint within the context of a clinical trial. What, what figure seven nicely highlights is that it questions the potential value of that surrogate endpoint. Um, and that's been a fairly intense debate within the literature as a whole. And so effectively what it's doing is it's taking a difference between the progression-free survival and then the eventually reported overall survival. And it highlights that in studies where approvals occur at an early endpoint when all you have is progression-free survival data, there may be changes in how you interpret that data when the eventual overall survival data gets put out. 